I'm Mike, Whiskey Alpha 9, Papa India Echo with Hammerio Deluxe. If you find this video useful, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. All right. Well, Lindy's out gallivanting around ZL with her kids and, and my XYL. And so I get to do a video on my own. I've had this kind of in the works for a while. It's actually one of the more common questions that we get from people. The, one of the things that people struggle with is how do I connect my radio? And, fr and frankly, I just had somebody um, contact us a while ago, uh, you know, before, you know, earlier this evening um, with the same question. And so, you know, when I hit some of the points that people um, tend to have problems with and really not software related, it's really a matter of kind of sorting out the things about Windows that really have been around for a PC since DOS days, but we've still kind of kept it. You know, the computer industry and the uh, ham radio hardware manufacturers have kept it. So I'm going to go through these topics a little bit here. Um, and I'll give you probably a little bit more information that you really want maybe on COM ports, but I'll just explain um, some of the things that um, are unique about COM ports. Um, it really kind of goes back to the 60s. It does go back to the 60s with standards created by the Electronic Industries Association and later uh, maintained by the TIA, Telecommunications Industry Association. And um, it was originally drafted in 1960 but then uh, updated in 1969 as part of the um, EIA RS-232C standard that defines um, the uh, serial binary data interchange for um, data terminal equipment and data communications equipment. We'll touch on that point again here in a moment. Um, Microsoft actually depreciated support for um, COM ports in favor of USB or a universal serious serial bus, not uh, upper sideband in this particular case, but depreciated support for serial uh, RS-232 um, connections in 1997. So it's, we've really been kind of 25 years as an industry, um, not really moving too far away from the things that were good back then. But then again, you know, it takes, you know, 10 years to get, 10, 20 years to get new technology on the space shuttle. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but so, you know, you got a couple different kinds of um, RS-232 COM ports physically. Um, most of them are 9-pin. You can still, you know, back in the old days, there were some 25-pin serial connectors, but you really find them in nine pin, um, male and female. But it's important that to understand that the, the standard really began um, defining a data terminal equipment connector and a data communications equipment connector. And um, you know, the DTE refers to um, the port on a PC and the DCE refers to the port on the thing that the PC connects to. Um, so the DTE um, really should have a male connector and the DCE, in other words, the thing that the computer connects to would have a female connector on it. So this is great, except when you get to devices like this one, which gave me fits. <laughs> this is the uh, the Yaesu um, GS232B rotor controller. And you can see on the back, it's got a male connector on it. <laughs> and, you know, the rough part about that is, is that it's hard to find, if you've ever had one of these things, it's hard to find the right kind of cable because it's not the right kind of connector. Um, that connector is for a data terminal equipment device, or it's a, in other words, a PC. 
but um, it's really a data communications equipment device and it should have a female on it. Uh, I've often been tempted to just open the thing up and rewire it and put a female connector on it. But I go monkeying around with trying to find the right cables to connect it, you know, so you need, you know, some sort of a gadget to convert it from a male to female. I'll show you the pictures of this in the moment. They, they call, we used to call them gender benders in the, in the telecommunication space many years ago. But um, you need some way to, to flip it uh, from, from male to female, and then you most likely need some way to uh, turn it into a, um, you know, across the communications wires, and I'll show, the, show you that here in a second too. Well, PCs had these things back in the day, right? Because um, you had a serial port, like I'm showing here, that was on the back of the PC, and you connected it to what? Well, you connected it to a modem. And the modem was connected to a phone line, and that's how you got connected to, um, later on, the internet. But initially, you might connect to a bulletin board um, or something of that sort, or where, you know, maybe you connected to the, the service that provided you your mail, email, or whatever. But um, anyway, PCs, you know, initially had these things on them. And then uh, those went away, and you started to see modems built in. Those went away and you started to see inter Ethernet connectors on them. Those are starting to vanish. Now you're seeing uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, USB ports, you know. And so we've made this transition in PC hardware over the course of the last 25 years, but we're still shipping ham radio equipment with COM ports and or, um, uh, you know, virtual COM ports that, you know, get connected through the USB. But anyway, you took this thing and you connected it to mice. <laughs> there was actually a serial mouse when this first started. Um, but this on the right hand side is a, a US Robotics 28.8 um, uh, modem. So you would have a cable that connected, you know, from that connector out to your modem. And that's how you got, you know, connected to the internet or whatever. And here's an interesting f phrase. The future is here. It's just not evenly distributed. So you got um, flex radios that have an Ethernet connector on them, and you've got um, you know other radios by popular manufacturers that still have a COM port on them. Uh, sooner or later, those things need to go away. If they did, then all of us wouldn't have the kinds of problems I'm going to describe here. But because they do, and because we still have to use COM ports, even if they're virtual COM ports, we still have to understand how they work. So here's, um, I can't remember what radio this is, but you know, again, we're living with 20, 25 year old technology. And you can see that this radio, um, this might even be uh, um, an FTDX 5000, if I remember correctly, I, I, it might be. But you can see on the back of this relatively modern radio, you still have that one serial port um, shown there and it's listed as CAT, so computer assisted, um, whatever it is. Um, I'm not sure what the T stands for, but anyway, this is the port that you would connect to uh, your radio. So if you don't have a COM port on your PC now, you know, but you've got this connector on the radio you own, then you got to start looking for one of these gadgets, depending on whether or not the radio. Let's flip back there again real quick. You know, they've, they've got a male connector on the radio. That should be a female. Is it a male or a female? Anyway, that should be a female connector. So then you're going to, you know, have to get one of these, depending on which one connects to it. Or I mentioned the, the gender benders. You know, depending on what cable you've got, you might have to connect one of these things. And then you get into this problem where, well, Okay, I'm, I'm, I've used the right cable. I've got, well, at least I've used a cable that's connecting. So all the physical aspects of the connector match up to my radio, but I'm still not able to connect to my radio. And that be, could be because some cables, some COM port cables or serial cables are called straight through cables. Some are null modem cables. 
and basically what happens is, and you notice in these two diagrams, uh, pins two and three are either um, flipped or not, and that's how the uh, the communications happens between both. I mean, in in the upper diagram, you see that uh, pin number two is crossed to pin number two on the other con on, the, on the other connector, and pin three is crossed to pin three. Great. So two goes to two, three goes to three, and that's a straight through cable. If you look at the null modem cable, um, it provides a communications path by allowing the RX to talk to the TX and the TX to talk to the RX. This is called a null modem cable. And uh, you can see that two is connected to three and three is connected to two. Well, why isn't this simple? Because this sounds like a major pain in the tail. And it, and it is simply because um, you know, first of all, we should have gotten rid of it years ago, and second of all, people didn't follow the standards. So, you know, how long are we going to have to live with this 25 year old technology? Well, some radios, and I can't remember which one, oh, this is an FTDX 101D. So, the, the FTDX 101D actually gives you both. Um, lots of radios give you both. I'm going to show an example of one that I'm using here in a moment. Um, that's great. Uh, if it shows you, gives you both, then you usually get, you will always get the sound card or probably get the sound card from the USB, but it's also a source of virtual COM ports. I'll talk about that in a moment. Here's an IC7300. You can see that it doesn't provide both. So the way you get connected is by using the USB cable there. I think you can use that 13 pin aux cable or accessory cable too. Um, I haven't used a 7300 in a while, but I do know that if you plug in your USB cable to your PC with the driver uh, installed from ICOM, you'll get a virtual COM port that you can use to connect to the radio and sound card interface. Here's an FTDX10. Again, we're still seeing both there. Um, this is a flex. So the Flex doesn't have both. As I said before, you know, you got the Ethernet cable. Um, so, you know, and, and some USB cables there to connect it to your PC. I'm sure you get, you know, the COM port, the virtual COM ports that way too. So what do you need, virt what do you need COM ports for? Um, oh, here we go. Computer assisted tuning. So, um, this is really the connection that you're making from the PC to the radio so that you can control all the functions of the radio. It's not the sound card piece. And in fact, sometimes you'll find some equipment that has a separate sound card interface like the um, Signalink USB. And you'll find another gadget that has the you know, CAD interface only, like it's a COM port or a serial cable or something. Sometimes you'll find gadgets that have both of these in the same, like West Mountain Radio's equipment or um, MicroHam. So, uh, so you got to have it uh, to connect the radio to. You, I also use it for push to talk, but there's a number of ways to do push to talk. You can use uh, a dedicated COM port, which is what I like. You can use Vox, which I do quite often when I'm operating remotely. Uh, you can use cat commands, but you know, the reason why I like the uh, dedicated physical COM port, it's because it's, it's absolutely immediate. Um, it, it's the best performance um, for push to talk that you can get because it uh, keys a relay on the radio that enacts the push to talk. Um, you, the, Cat commands are fine and, and uh, Vox is fine. There's just um, a few more milliseconds of delay that, um, that uh, you'll see there. Mostly it's not noticeable, but for me, I just like to have a dedicated COM port. Sometimes, like if in the example of the IC7300, that just means that I have to go out and get another um, serial cable, like a USB to serial cable. You know, they're, 25 bucks or whatever and uh, connect it to my PC and then I can use that to connect to the push to talk um, ports on the uh, on the radio 
So you see these show up, you know, when you go into Windows Device Manager, it's going to show you that um, with the IC7300, it gets, gets you that one COM port. Uh, the FTDX10 gives you two. I'll talk about why that's uh, a nice to have here in a few minutes. Um, you can see these COM ports uh, in, in uh, Ham Radio Deluxe Rig Control when you start it up. If you click on the uh, Serial Ports tab, you can see that uh, this is the, I believe this is the FDDX10 that I had connected when, uh, when this came up. But you see the Enhanced Port and the um, Standard Port. And the manuals tell you to use, this is the Yesu approach, the manuals tell you to use the Enhanced Port for CAT um, unless you're having performance problems or some other problems. I've not had any of those problems, but um, but that's uh, that's the best way to approach it. Um, you can then you can use the standard COM port for push to talk, and that works quite well. I do that myself, which is the reason to use the USB port and its virtual COM ports rather than the physical RS-232 port, in my opinion. All uh, right, so. There's one thing that's really important, trips people up all the time, which is there's the law of physics around COM ports and, and PCs. And that is only one application can occupy a COM port at one time. So if you've got a radio and you're using its only you know, COM port or the virtual COM ports that you're given, um, you connect a software application to it, let's say for example Ham Radio Deluxe, and then you go to connect another application like WSJTX to the radio, you actually can't use the same COM port um, with both applications. So that's why in, in um, WSJTX there's an option to connect to the radio using Ham Radio Deluxe and that works perfectly. Um, you can find that information on our uh, support site if you just go into support.hamradiodeluxe.com and just put in WSJTX in the search and it will show you the information you need to set that up properly. So um, so one at a time, you know, and then I get people saying, yeah, but, you know, I know there's software packages out there that split the COM port so that you can have multiple applications accessing the COM port. Well, that's true. For, for a little bit of extra cash, you can... Uh, basically have a situation where you've got inside the computer you've got a piece of software that's splitting the COM port now the, the the software itself is now what's controlling the connection to the P to the radio um, that physical connection to the radio can't be shared but within the splitter software um, you can allocate virtual COM ports one for cat one for push to talk you can have one for you know various different other purposes if, if there are some but um, that's how you would do that um, there's some software titles out there we sell Ultima's VSPD you can buy uh, VSPE uh, um, you can find com zero com it's free out there on the internet I find it a bit hard to configure so if I'm going to do it at all I'm using uh, VSPD but those are those are your options there and um, so ham, ham radio deluxe rig control will show you a list of available COM ports and if you want to let it um, automatically try to search for them you can set it to search for the right COM port and the right baud rate so um, in, in the set selections, and I'll show the selections in a moment, but in those selections, rather than setting the COM port or the baud rate or speed, if you like, um, you can set it to um, automate or automated or something like that to f see if you can search and find it. Whoa, what's this baud rate thing? Okay, this is important. Um, the baud rate is the speed um, at which data and information is um, communicated over a communications channel, a serial communication channel. So basically 9600 baud means that the COM port will communicate at 9600 bits per second. It's good to know that most ham radio gear 
defaults it to 4800 um, which is the lowest and slowest one that you can use well we all like fast right so some of them will go to 115 200 baud or one you know 115,200 bits per second um, very commonly you'll see um, 38 I think it's 38400 and I'll show you that here in a moment um, but what what baud rate should you use well you should use the fastest baud rate available to the radio and the PC um, and again I call it baud rate because we're gonna see in the, in the radio manual here in a minute that that's that's how it describes it there so once you've decided what baud rate you're going to use and it's almost always not the default although that's fine too I suppose um, you should configure the software to use the same bot rate that you've configured the radio for. Some other minutiae you may see in different manuals, something like 96N81. What this means is it's a baud rate of 90, uh, 9600 bits per second, no parity, 8 data bits and 1 stop bit. Do you need to know any of that information? Probably not because everybody's kind of standardized on N81. So you know now you're doing 9600 N81, 4800 N81, or 38400 N81, 19200 N81, whatever. It's all N81, but you may see that in your manuals. And uh, so there's flow control that may be required for your radio and you just need to look at the manual um, to figure out whether or not you need flow control or not. Um, Yaesu radios generally require RTS um, maybe some other radios require CTS which is clear to send but this is the the in in the connector it's what the communications devices use to tell the other side that you can start sending data back to me um, so in my radio and I'm going to use the FT 991 as an example here uh, before you plug the radio in go to the manufacturer's website so I went to Yesu's website made sure that I had all the drivers um, for the radio and I downloaded them and installed them do all that stuff first um, otherwise you, you can just you know potentially make things harder on yourself so when you get the driver installed then you can connect the radio um, but you know you're gonna want to set like I said the baud rate now um, in the FT991A manual, um, the cat rate, you can see it says, sets the baud rate for the cat command input. Um, it's really the cat command communications. Um, you can see the default set to 4800. Uh, I change it to 38400. Um, leave the timeout timer set to 10 milliseconds, that's fine and leave the RTS set to enable that's fine so you can see in the lower left that's exactly what I have set up on my uh, uh, FT991A here so but but then you know, you're gonna plug the thing in so once you've got the the baud rate set and, and and those menu settings you're gonna plug it in this is where I say you know even the you know radios as new as the 991A still have the serial port or the RS-232 port as well as the USB with uh, the serial or the um, the um, RS-232 port which is number five in this diagram uh, you can use it for GPS or CAT if you use it for CAT then you can't you don't have a GPS connection if you if you use that but if you also use it for CAT you only get one COM port so I prefer to use the USB for, for CAT because it, in this particular case it will give you two virtual COM ports, the standard and enhanced that I talked about earlier. Now let's figure, if you ever want to figure out what COM ports the radio actually created, you can go through this procedure here. You can unplug the radio, uh, if, it's, if it's already plugged in, just unplug it then open Windows Device Manager you can just type Device Manager in the Windows menu uh, Windows Start menu search and then um, open up ports by toggling the the arrow there by ports and um, it'll drop down the ones that are connected um, without the radio plugged in 
Then you plug the radio in without closing that device manager window and it will show you the COM ports. And here you can see you know, I've got the enhanced on COM port 5. So that's the one that I want to connect to. You can also see that, again, like I showed a while ago, you can see that in um, the serial ports box uh, uh, menu or tab in the connect screen. It's not presently showing them as enhanced or whatever, but you, you took notes of that anyway. Um, but you do need to make sure that they're showing up in rig control. If they're not, then just restart rig control um, after the radio is turned on because it won't um, enumerate them if you don't if you don't do it that way. Um, in other words, start the radio first before you start the software. And then if you're ready ready to connect, then basically you you know create a new connection here to uh, you know, change the company to whatever radio you've got here. Um, you change the model to the model of your radio. You change the COM port to the one that um, I suggested. Um, you change the speed to the one that you set, or to set the one you set. So uh, you could these COM port and speed right there. You could actually set it to auto, and it will find them. But because this radio has two COM ports, I'm going to want to just pin it down to COM port five, and I already know that it's connected to, or it's a uh, baud rate set to 34 or 38400. And then um, set your uh, flow control to RTS because that's what the manual says you need to do. And um, because we saw that right here moments ago, CAT RTS and menu uh, 33. So um, once you set all those things, you click connect. And then by some miracle, you're connected. Um, and that's all there is to it. So little bit of a longer video I wanted to make sure that um, I hit all the topics and you know, there's a lot of complexity in COM ports there really wasn't much of a big deal when we all had DOS based PCs because oddly enough with COM ports and DOS based PCs you didn't have multiple applications running at the same time that were all potentially trying to get to the one COM port so it made perfectly good sense I've started this application. It's going to connect to this COM port, and it's the only thing connected to the COM port. I don't have to worry about it. But then when Windows came along and became a multi-threaded, multitasking operating system, you could have multiple applications running. Nothing ever changed about the <laughs> laws of physics with regards to uh, COM ports. Uh, so you can only have one application occupying a COM port at once, and so. That's what makes things a little bit more complex. I mean, imagine if we had to do that with plugging in printers or something and we had to you know, sort out you know, port numbers and all that stuff. You really don't. You just plug it in. Windows recognizes that you've plugged in a printer, loads the drivers, and you start printing. That's what needs to happen with ham radio gear. It's not quite there yet. So, um, but that's where we are. I want to give that as an overview. And I uh, hope you found it uh, helpful. And so with that, I'll say 73. And I uh, hope to see you again soon. This is Mike, Whiskey Alpha 9, Papa India Echo. Cheers.